So domain of trigonometric functions. When we're asked for domain, what we're usually asking, Ken, is this. What are the possible x values? In the case of trig functions, we're saying, what are the possible values of theta? And sometimes the best way to answer that question is to say what values are not included. The first two kind of go together. They are sine and cosine. So I would ask you, aren't R sine or cosine, are either one of them rational functions? And they are not rational, are they? So what we have, so we can say then that, that the domain is all angles theta. All angle theta. That is to say there's not a number in that we can put in. There's not an angular value that we can put in that makes that thing go undefined. And if that's not clear enough, when we talk about the next one, it should be. So we talk about tangent and cosecant theta. So when you look at these at first, it's kind of hard to figure out what the big deal is. But if all you have to do is go here, rewrite tangent in the form of a rational function, and you'll get, well, you get sine theta over cosine theta. And cosecant, do I have the right one? Yes, no, I want, sec I want secant, good job, sorry. Right, I want secant theta, good job. Because that's one over cosine theta, isn't it? Now we have to look, we have to look at the unit circle now and ask ourselves for what values, for what, what angular values is cosine equal to zero? And where is that? I'm always going to start off my my definition like this. The domain is all angles theta. And then I'm going to put in my exception here, my exclusion. Except, anybody know what it is? Well, what's cosine of pi halves? Zero. So if we put pi halves in, if we took secant of pi halves, we'd get one over zero, wouldn't we? Right? Which would be undefined. Isn't that right? So all angles say they accept pi halves plus what? Plus what? Plus pi n. Isn't that right? Look at this for a second, right? This is where we are on the unit circle, if you don't mind. Here's 2 pi. Here's pi halves, isn't it? Here's 3 pi halves. So if I say this, if I, say, if I start off this and I say, that for this angular value, cosine is zero, isn't it? Yeah. What? Cosine yeah. So cosine is zero here, isn't it? So we'd have something over zero. That's undefined, isn't it? What this, this does right here is, this pi right here, pi is 180 degrees. It takes us to here, three pi halves. Isn't cosine of three pi halves? Zero. Undefined again, isn't it? And this n value right here is any integer. So what it's going to do is it's going to keep taking us around the circle back to this undefined place, this undefined place. So every time we get to the undefined value, is that making any sense? N has to be an integer. N must be an integer. Yes. So that leaves us where? So, so we have we have the function and domain of these four. That leaves us with what? Cotan theta and cosecant theta. And what do they have in common? Cotan is what? Cosine. This is what I, when you're looking for the domain, you're looking for this as a rational function, if possible, to see what values will make this thing go undefined. And cosecant, of course, is 1 over sine theta, isn't it? Now you have to ask yourself, is there any angular value on the unit circle where sine of theta is zero? Because that will make the, yep, at, at 2 pi, right? But we're not going to start at 2 pi. We start at zero when we go to where? We go to pi, right? We go to pi. We start here, right? And then where is it undefined again? How far away is that? Pi again, right? And pi again. So... Start off with what we are allowed to have. So we'll say we're allowed to have all angles theta except, except for pi n, 
right? <clears throat> even if you let even if you let n be zero, you'd be here and it'd be undefined, wouldn't it? And if n was one, you'd be here. If n was two, etc. Ad nauseum, right? Crucial that you know these things, not just that you memorize them, but why that's true, and that's what I'll be looking for from you.